that's very good heroes. Now, lead, of course, is very important. We use it in every car, we use lead as a battery, we use lead in many appliances. Uh, but on the other hand, it's, it's a toxic material, it's neurotoxic. Some people speculate that the Roman Empire fell apart because of lead poisoning of the Roman elite. I don't know if it's true, but certainly that is a, is a toxic material. And for us today, the main question in waste management is what are we doing with lead which we don't use anymore? What are we doing with it? And what would be an appropriate final thing? What would be an appropriate place on the globe to concentrate the lead so that it stays harmless? That's, that's waste management. So when I take the train from Rome to Napoli and I see some, some garbage bag outside of the train laying in the streets, I don't see the garbage bag, I see the lead. Because the garbage bag, they are just a nuisance, an optical nuisance. But the lead inside our waste, that's more than an optical, more than an aesthetic nuisance. It's a real threat. So we need solutions for some substances like mercury, like lead, like hexafluorobenzene, like endocrine substances, like cancerogenic substances, which we have everywhere in our materials, which are very beneficial, which are of high economic value. But once these things turn into waste, we need solutions for these materials. That's the problem. And the problem is that we have such a dramatic increase in substance exploitation and in substance synthesis during the last maybe 200 years, but it started a long time ago, especially in this country. This tremendous turnover of materials on a global base led to some interesting phenomena. If you compare the geogenic cadmium flow with the natural, uh, with the anthropogenic natural flow, like this picture, then you see the natural flow on the left hand side and the man-made flow on the right hand side, you immediately realize that man on the global level is transforming more lead than nature. And if we would make the balances on the soil on the left and right hand side, we would, we would see that the soil today is accumulating cadmium because man-made turnover is so much bigger and because the pattern people are using cadmium today. Especially, cadmium has been blown into the atmosphere. This picture is made, done in the 1980s, 1985. We published this picture. And most of the lead of the cadmium during that time was blown into the air by metallurgical processes and by waste management, by waste incineration. So we had a heavy load of the soil. This has been recognized. Measures, countermeasures have been taken, and today, of course, the load, the atmosphere is much smaller. What does it mean if the load of the atmosphere is smaller than just the accumulation? The accumulation in this uh, uh, stock here in the uh, stock of 200, this accumulation becomes bigger, and the problem is postponed into the future. So we need here solutions to those materials which we uh, turn over at the rate which is much higher than the natural rates. We have only a few places on the globe where we can dispose of our materials. We can dispose of in the air, in the water, on the soil. And this picture here by Adam Neiman, and he won the Novartis Prize for Visualization in Science, I think, in 2003. He shows us all the atmosphere we have on the globe which is able to dilute our emissions which we release the atmosphere. All the atmosphere taken together as a ball in relation to the planet. And the next one is all the water. You see there is no water on the oceans anymore. You see all the water taken together. That's the amount of water we have to dilute our chloride, for instance, which leads into the oceans. That's quite 
impressive, I think, that it shows that our air and water is limited as a dimension, dimension. And if you look at the chaos here, and soil flow, then in the same scale, we need to scale the limited limit, uh, resource in our planet. And we need to recognize the disposal of basically in the soil that something we have to bear that in our The capacity we have, the capacity involved is much, much higher than the capacity in the soil that we have to be really careful. What are now the consequences for waste management? The first one you have seen, the soil is actually the scarcest resource we have as a dilution potential for waste management. Therefore, landfills should not be um, managed in a way that they release um, uh, constituents at a large amount. And if you look here at the so-called reactor landfills, which are most landfills today in Europe, then you see that uh, biochemical and uh, physical chemical processes release materials from landfills over 10, uh, over 100 to 1,000 years. And you see that geochemical processes like erosion release these materials even for longer time period. So, Today's landfills, wherever they are, they need aftercare. We need to treat the wastewater, the leachates, we need to treat the gas coming from these reactors. This is a fact, and we know it, and we have to do that for the next couple of centuries. Doesn't matter if it's an open dump or if it's a sanitary landfill. It's much easier in a sanitary landfill because then we have controlled leachates, control of gas. By the dump, you cannot control the leachate because of the groundwater. It would like a severe situation then in the, in the future. Uh, now, there are concepts to handle this situation. One concept is the three barrier principle. The first barrier is the material, the waste material itself, by clever transformation of the waste material into an inert material, we can prevent that this inert material in the future is, 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 uh, is causing leachate, is causing emissions into the air, etc. So, waste pre treatment before landfill. The European Union has uh, issued a directive that uh, pre treatment before, before landfilling is mandatory. This is not enough yet because. This directive does not mandate yet that all organic constituents are being destroyed, transformed to CO2, mineralized. The reason is clear. At the moment, it is too early to mandate incineration of all fuel. This is not uh, feasible at the moment. But it will be needed in the future to, to transform organic carbon in waste is into mineralized carbon so that we don't have any organic material leaching from, from landfills. The second barrier is the envelope around the landfill and the second barrier is also the underground which should be unparalleled and of course the third barrier must be a control principle. We must be able to analyze if the first and the second barrier promise or hold what they promise if they can keep their promises. The main emphasis of future waste management is on waste treatment. And of course, if we compare here red municipal solid waste, red municipal solid waste with brown or black earth, we see that for 